Susie Bozich is the woman with the innocent-looking face and sweet smile. On this dating website, Susie lists herself as single, looking for love and a simple life. But she clearly states she does not want to get married. Why? Because she already is. I thought it was three marriages and I was number four. As it turns out, I think I was number five. Does it surprise you then that she's currently on dating sites and she lists her relationship status as single? No, as a matter of fact, I was told that she had been listing her status as single while we were still living in the same house. Ken Cherry married Susie in St. Louis, Missouri on July 13th, 2005. It wasn't a Friday the 13th, but Ken said it turned out to be the worst day of his life. She's kind of arsed. And, you know, I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I'm just shaking my head going, I cannot believe how convoluted and how many layers of insanity this is. This is just crazy. Why would somebody keep doing this? Rick Burroughs is a private investigator Ken Cherry hired to look into his estranged wife. She's got a history of going from one man to another when either the finances run out or she's not happy. Who knows what her motive is? The only thing I can think of is it's greed. Ken's replaced his wedding band from Susie with the tattoo of barbed wire. Marriage was that bad. 10 years of my life gone, wasted. Ken claims this table full of legal documents tells just a small part of his personal health. This is just a fraction of it. I've got about three times as much at home. There have been accusations of stalking and restraining orders. Ken claims Susie changed the locks when he left on a business trip. She took out a loan in his name, forged his signature on checks totaling 3,500 bucks. I pretty much lost everything. I'm in debt and uh, you know, that's it. But that's not it. Far from it. Here's the real shocker. All the time Susie's been married to Ken, she was legally married to this man, husband number four, Bruce Westbecker. When was the last time you saw Susan? August of 97. A month and a half ago, a private investigator shows up at my home and tells me that I'm married. And it was pretty shocking. On a marriage license application to Ken in 2005, she put down that she had gotten divorced from Bruce Westbecker, number four, in January of 1997. And she filled this out in July of 2005. So she had eight and a half years to get divorced, and she never did. She knew she wasn't divorced from him. Her whole life has been a lie. If you interview all of these husbands, I'm sure you're going to hear the exact same things with very little difference. Crime Watch Daily is going to put Ken's theory to the test. Well, Ken, there's someone I want to introduce you to. Okay. Ken, this is Bruce, husband number four. How did you guys both fall for the same woman? She can convince you of things that you know aren't necessarily true. When I met her, she was quite a bit younger, and she looked a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> With husbands four and five in tow, we decide to take a ride. We go down here and take uh, 170 North. Getting answers from Susie Bozich is harder than getting married to her. Not that I'd ever marry her, for the record. Susie Bozich is a woman who just loves being married. In fact, she's nearly worn out the soles of her shoes walking down the aisle. Susie's been hitched at least five times. She loves it so much, Susie was married to both of these guys at the same time. They never officially met, so Crime Watch Daily brought them together. Ken, there's someone I want to introduce you to. Okay. Ken, Ken, this is Bruce, husband number four. How did you get out of the relationship? I escaped. I, moved, I left the state, moved to Wisconsin. Did you ever file for divorce? No, I did not. While I was there, my mother-in-law, not my mother, my stepmother, told me, called and told me that uh, it was in the paper and that we were divorced. So that was my belief for all these years. How long did you think you were married to Susan? Uh, a little bit over nine years. Um, it would have been the 10th anniversary this year. 
Ken Cherry married his bigamist bride thinking she had divorced Bruce Westbecker years before. At the time of this interview, Susie was living in Ken's house, still legally married to Bruce, and neither one of the guys had a key to the front door. Just go down the hill and go back up that other ramp over there across the road there. We all decided to take a ride to see if we could get Susie's side. And we're in luck. Susie's home. But Susie never answers the door. Susan, this is Jason Matera with Crime Watch Daily. Husbands four and five never expected her to. You've been accused of bigamy and fraud. But you're still married to Susie. This is what I'm told. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel like I'd really better get busy and get this done quickly. We know you're there. I saw the TV running. Susan, you got your name on the title under false pretenses. It says you're Ken's wife, but we know that can't be the case because you're still married to Bruce. Since Bruce is still legally married to Susie Bozich, her marriage to Ken has been declared void. She's a bigamist. She was given an opportunity to prove that she had actually tried to divorce this man. She could not do that because she didn't do it. You think with that and his pile of legal paperwork, it would clear the way for Ken to get his house, his money, and his life back. Are you sure you don't want to give your side of the story, Susan? She's a criminal, you know. You're legally entitled to be on this property, and she rekeyed it. So this yeah, is your property. It's mind-boggling that when they have the proof right there, it should be open and shut. They refuse to do anything. The laws are designed to protect people, but they're protecting the wrong people. Bigamy was once punishable by death in some parts of the world. In most states today, it's still considered a felony with the possibility of a lengthy prison sentence. But in Missouri, it's less criminal and more civil. But Rick Burroughs, the private investigator Ken hired, says this case is different. It's not a civil matter. It's a criminal matter. The bigamy is the route to the fraud, the bad checks, her signing her name as his wife on the documents for the house when she wasn't legally his wife. Ken's out thousands of dollars and his house because of the actions of this woman. It's a misdemeanor, class A misdemeanor. So it, it uh, has a range of punishment up to a year in the county jail and a thousand dollar fine. Dan Deemer, Ken's attorney, argues some of the things Susie Bozich did to his client are criminal, but getting police involved at this point is nearly impossible. Essentially what you get is a police force that is targeting things that are either burning or bleeding. Those are the things that get attention. What are the chances that the circuit attorney ends up taking up this case? Zero. So Ken's recourse at this point is what? It's, it's all civil. And just when Ken thought he had heard it all about Susie, this bomb drops. There may actually be a husband number six. There was no marriage license taken out, but she had been involved with a inmate that had been on death row. And you came across this through your research? Came across this in the research by talking to husband number three. The reason he divorced Susan was because she came home and pronounced that she was in love with Lloyd Schloop, who was a convicted murderer. And there's one more little detail. Old Susie's been involved in this death row romance for close to 20 years. In November of 2013, the prisoner's mother passed away. And in the obituary, where the significant others are normally in parentheses after the family members, there is a Susan of St. Louis listed as his significant other. Two months later, his sister passes away. In that obituary, she is listed as Susie behind his name as a significant other. Ironically, prison may be the safest place for a man dealing with Susie Bozich. At least, that's what her ex and soon to be ex husband say. I think she should be stopped. Guys should start paying attention. Everybody does background checks on everybody now. If you're going to get involved with her, definitely do a background check. You'll save yourself a lot of money and a lot of heartache. She's a very convincing person, you know. It could be daylight, and she could probably present a pretty good argument to you for why it's nighttime. The whole 10 years was a lie. So. What would you say to the guys who are interacting with her? I'd say if they pursue it, they're damn fools.
Jason and Susie's collection of former husbands continued to knock on the door for close to an hour to try to talk to Susie. She never did answer the door. We have also reached out to Susie's attorney and received no response.